black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah, fuck with me. Back with a dirty, very, very dirty chili cheese chos, mukbang, story time. Story time about how me, my stepbrothers, and my cronies uh, essentially adopted and took care of and befriended a stray pelican for a week when we were like 10 years old. Most random shit that's ever happened in my entire life. I swear to God, like it blew my mind when it was happening. And now when I think about back to it, it still kind of blows my mind. I got to get into these because I've been craving these for days now. And I'll tell you why. The other day I stumbled across this channel called Sauce Queen and this chick it's been a lot, a long time since someone's made me crave like through videos the way that she has right now. And uh, she did chili cheese nachos and she loads sour cream on everything. And I'm just like such a sour cream fiend. So like I feel a, like a little sour connection with her on that. Um, and just she just likes everything really saucy, same as me. And then just the way she did it was super basic, just like cheese, the queso the chili cheese and sour cream. I added a little Valentina. It's just like, for me, there's just something about simplicity that is so key. Sometimes I overdo things, so it was lettuce, tomato. Sometimes it's just not necessary. So if you have not ever seen her channel, go check it out, Sauce Queen. Uh, if you can't handle large amounts of sauces, don't go check it out. Wow. I haven't had a dirty plate of nachos like this in so long. I got the Thin and Crispies. But the wetness from these ingredients is already sogging them out. So to the story. When I was about 10, 10 years old, again, this happens. Like where I almost got abducted. Uh, it happens out at my like summer camp home place. And so there was these kids down the beach called the Browns. And there were three of them, they were boys. And I have three step, or sorry, four, three, well, three of my step brothers were involved in this. The other one's older, but so it was seven boys all together. And then this one girl who used to hang out with us, and her name was Marla. She was very much a tomboy. She could hang with us. She could keep up with us. She was essentially one of the guys, but everybody had a crush on her, you know? She was one of those good-looking tomboys. So it was like our, you know, pretty much daily ritual to either permitting the weather was nice, spend the day on the beach, being young goofs, swimming, doing dumb shit, either at our place or at the Browns place. And so this, 
this whole story took place at the Browns' place. I'm starving and going full savage, by the way. So anyways, we're hanging out there one day and um, they have like this long dock. Um, where their beach was, like you could walk out really far, like really, really far, because it was really shallow, was sandbar. And uh, we're all hanging out on the beach, you know, playing around, being ridiculous. Eight of us, and uh, we like look down near the end of the dock, and like underneath the dock, there's like this white, you know, thing, kind of animal-looking thing, tucked in and floating. It's kind of bob bobbing under the dock, so of course. We like Hardy Boys it and go investigate. And when we get up there and look at it, it's a pelican. And pelicans are pretty big. Probably weighed about the same as us, to be honest. At that age. And so we're trying to like see what's up with it. It doesn't seem to be injured or anything, but it's all alone. He's not on the move. So we somehow like coax it to shore Pretty sure we got bread. And we got it to come to shore. And so we started feeding it, and he was just like just gulping these these buns down. But after that. He or she, to be honest, we didn't like check its genitals, so we don't know really. Just laid on the beach with us for the rest of the day, like it just didn't move, it just wanted to like chill with us. Kept putting its head on backwards because pelicans, like that's when they lay down, they like, twist their head right back around and they lay their head on their body. So it's like their beak is at their butt. It's like super crazy. But so Mans is just chilling with us. We're like, well, like this is crazy, but okay, whatever. Your crew now, you can stick stick around. Comes time, we gotta go for dinner or whatever. We all split our separate ways and leave them there. Like, ah, oh, he's just gonna go off and do his own thing. Go to hang out the next day. Roll up to their place, head down to the beach. Pelican's not there. So we're dicking around, playing for a while. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, a 
look near the end of the dock. Who's there? Pelly. He's just floating towards the shore, coming right for us. We're like, what? Yo, what up, bruh? Just comes up, walks on the shore, comes right up by, by us again, starts chilling. At this point, we're like trying to like interact with him and stuff, like get him to like go fetch. Do weird shit. Eventually, like, obviously, we feed him again. At this point, we've named him Pelly. What a mess. So, Pelly's just ill in with us. We never tell our parents, though, because we're just like, we want, you know, we don't want anybody to intervene. At a certain point when we would go in the water, just like go swim and walk out on the sandbar, Pelly would pop up, pop in the water, come right out with us. We'd all swim around, Pelly's chilling, like he's dipping down under the water probably looking for fish but ooh we soggy now so we're all like this is wild literally wild wildlife <laughs> This goes on for about a week. Just chilling with Pelly. It's like our main guy. He shows up every day. And he wouldn't be waiting on the beach. He'd just, we'd be chilling for a while. That's, it's like he'd hear us. And all of a sudden he'd just like show up. up some of this leftovers with some crunchies so one day we come back Pelly Pelly's a no-show like damn where you at bro He continually no-shows for about a week. So we're like, you know, obviously he just kind of moved on. We get it, Pelly. You gotta live your life. Turns out he actually was no longer alive to live his life. He was found uh, later dead, deceased. Under the neighbor's like front deck, so I guess he had been taking refuge maybe under that deck. Uh, evidently, I think it was he was you know not doing so well. Maybe an old guy just wanted to live his last days out with some fresh young spirits. Try to feel youthful in the end, you know what I mean? But yeah, they found him dead. Under the deck. <clears throat> About a week later. And we're like... <laughs> Yo, that's Pelly. And like, the people were like... What? <laughs> we're like, oh, we've been hanging out with him for like a week. Like, what do you mean? Like, he's just been on the beach with us, chilling. Like, we fed, fed him bread and like swam with him. 
we became gang gang. Of course, that wasn't a term back then, but you guys know what I mean. So, we RIP'd Pelly. It was a little sad because he was such a down to earth dude. He really knew. He really knew how to kick it. So, a little bit sad, but whatever. R.I.P. Pelly. R.I.P. Pelly. And uh, that's the circle of life. That's how things happen. We all die one day. That, however, was one of the most random, weird, but super memorable life experiences I've ever had. So, you know, shout out Pelly. It's been, it's been a long while, so I'm sure he's settled in wherever he is, but, or she. Keep referring to him as a he, but like I said, we didn't check the genitals, so who knows. Didn't really want to get that close, you know what I mean? That was banging. Crazy, crazy good. Super sloppy. Very crave-worthy, though. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. Till the next one. Eat good. Live well. Stay a true.